So now let's dive in. You're probably here because you want to help your child grow well. So let's start from the beginning. Let's remember the first time your child entered your life. And I don't mean when they were born. Let's go back a couple more steps. When you first learned that you are about to have a baby, whether this was your first child or not, do you remember how you felt and what you did when you heard the news? Take a couple of seconds to remember those days and those feelings. Were you nervous and happy both at the same time? Probably many things were going on in your mind. Your entire life must have changed. All your goals and priorities became centered around the coming baby. Maybe you started baby proofing the house or decorating the baby's nursery. You may have started shopping and started watching what you ate. Life as you know it was never the same again, was it? A lot was happening in your life, but a lot more was happening inside of you. I'm going to show you a video on a child's development. You may have already seen this video before, but I want you to take a look at it and reflect a bit. Wow, that was a beautiful illustration of the changes your child goes through from conception to delivery. This may have brought back some memories, hopefully some good ones. Now keeping this video in mind, I want you to reflect on this question. How much did you have to do while you were pregnant to ensure that your child grew and developed well? You probably started to be more conscious of what you ate and tried to get your vitamins and took extra care of yourself. And probably other people pitched in to help you. You went to a few doctor visits to ensure that your child is growing well. But you actually didn't really have to do too much physically to make sure they grew and developed. Your body was already designed to take care of all your baby's needs. When we are pregnant, our body uses everything it can get from our intake. Even if you're not eating well, nutrients will be removed from your own body's reserves to first give priority to your growing child. This can even be to your detriment sometimes, but the child's needs are almost always met one way or the other. Your eating and feeding are meant to reserve your own body stores, not for your growing baby per se, but to reserve your own body stores which are going to be used up by a growing child at every stage of their development. Everything your child needed was already in their DNA. Your child, even before he or she was born, knew how to grow, as you saw in this video. We are all born with the genetic blueprint to grow and develop. Even in your womb, your child knew the time it was for them to kick or to change positions and to knock to let them out. This all happened naturally. Our genes determine the color of our eyes, our personalities, even the shape and size of our body. When your baby was born, he or she already knew how to cry. 
You may have needed some help in the beginning, but once you showed your baby how and where to latch, they already knew how to start suckling, whether you were feeding them from the nipple or from the bottle. Your child already knew how to smile, how to blink, how to touch. You didn't have to teach that to them. He or she learned your face and began to fall in love with you. When you put your finger close by, they already knew one day how to grab it. You never needed to teach them. You just had to have it in front of them. This also happens with their toys. And when it was time for them to crawl or walk, they already started making the effort out of the blue. Like I said, they only needed our assistance, but they practically knew when it was time for them to do all the things they needed to do to grow up. Phases of development. From the very beginning, your relationship with your child is centered around food. From the moment you started breastfeeding, even formula feeding, this was always the time that you most spent with your child. Other than changing diapers and putting them to sleep, most of the waking hours that was spent with you was near or around food. Children not only depend on parents to provide the food, but they learn everything about life by the way they're fed. Their social, cognitive, and emotional development all depends on this relationship. It is important to understand the phases of development children go through to understand how to care and feed them at each stage. So the first stage of development is homeostasis. This is when your newborn is able to remain calm and stable in spite of outside stimulation. In the very beginning, it takes time for you to understand your newborn and it takes time for them to adjust to you and the new environment. Achieving homeostasis takes time. So a baby who has reached homeostasis is calm and easy to be around. He or she does not get upset and even when they do get upset, they're relatively easy to understand and make calm. They sleep well and they don't sleep too much and they're able to periodically wake themselves up and they ask to be fed and stay up long enough to feed themselves. And this takes time. Soon as the baby matures, he or she will have more frequent calm moments, which is where the next phase comes in. Usually one phase has to be met before the other phase can take precedence. The next phase of development is attachment. That's the falling in love stage. That's when the child begins to fall in love with you and automatically you begin to fall in love with them. And this is around two months of age or so. As long as your baby has reached that homeostasis and calmness level, they can start feeling the attachment and the love. Your baby starts to smile and reach out to you and engage with you. And they learn a lot about themselves and the world around them. They learn to trust themselves, but they also learn to trust you and they learn whether they can trust and depend on this world. Psychologists say that how a child felt in the first two years of their life sets the stage of how they feel about the world and relationships far into their future. If a child cannot depend on their parents to take care of their needs, they learn not to trust people and not open themselves up to others and usually have a hard time creating deep bonds. It usually manifests when they grow up and get married or become part of a committed relationship. The next phase of development for children is separation and individuality. This is when your child realizes he or she is their own person and have their own choices. This is when they realize their independence during their toddler years, around 6 to 12 months. They have a need to communicate and be understood. They have a burning need to do everything their way. They have a lot of autonomy and you start to hear a lot of no's. And they now want to start feeding themselves. This is where many children start to present behaviors of picky eating. More of this will be covered in the next module. The way a child is fed also teaches them about their capability to influence others and their self-worth. If your child asks for something and you respond to them in a prompt and appropriate fashion. For example, when you put the spoon in their mouth and leave it in there long enough for them to remove the food from the spoon, you show them that you're willing to let them take the lead 
and you encourage them to talk in a sense with you. You are building an essential communication and relationship pattern which will play a powerful role in not just your future interactions but also to support your child's cognitive, emotional and social development. Your child also learns that they matter and that other people find them interesting. They think, in whatever cute way they may think, that I must be a pretty important person that people go through that extra length to give me what I want and I know what I'm doing and what I'm asking is important. On the other hand, if your child has to make a fuss or fight or even struggle to get their needs met, or even if they do get it but it has very little or nothing to do with what they actually asked for, then they're likely to think of themselves as not having much importance to other people or to the world and that they're not worthy of being heard and that their needs don't really matter. 